again, air and fuel have two different densities, so we need to compensate for that. The problem with these early ports is the fuel would want to come down, then it would want to throw off the short turn, and it would want to end up over in this corner. This is why in the early type stuff, uh, swirl was so important in our two valve. It's still important today, uh, but it was very, very important back then. And depending on how you go with this, you can actually add more swirl without hurting horsepower. Because in the early days, everyone was worried about swirl killing horsepower, but it was due to the low port angles. And I think the, um, what's the Ford engine, the, the 7.3? Um, put it in the comments, you'll know what I'm talking about. They have a really, really high port angle and they have a ton of swirl. And that comes down to the fact that if the port's very, very low and we add a lot of swirl, it's we're gonna get these really, really short uh, corkscrews. It's gonna, it's not gonna spread across the chamber properly. But as we increase the port height, that same swirl would be down here. So we can add more swirl to the port and, and I'll optimize that mixing event. So you'll see there's a factor between port height and how much swirl we can get away with. And Godzilla, I think that's the one, uh, the 7.3 liter. Ben at EFI University has done a ton of testing. If you don't watch him, get on him. He's an absolute genius with internal combustion engines. Really, really like the guy. Shout out to Ben. Um, but yeah, swirl was the factor to try and help this fuel that's gonna end up biased on this side of the seat. Uh, and this is why a lot of the, uh, you know, twin cams and stuff, we, you can have an injector there or Formula One had it up here. Again, um, the further we go out, the better density recovery we get and so on and so on. 